Now we will study the norma verticalis or a superior view of the uh, skull. The vault of the skull is also called the calvarian. So this is the calvaria or the vault of the skull. The bones of the calvaria and the underlying lobes of the brain have similar names. Well, here we will uh, show the brain. This is the uh, cerebral hemisphere and we have the frontal lobe of the brain, parietal lobe of the brain, occipital lobe of the brain, and temporal lobe of the brain. These lobes of the brain, they have similar names to the bones that form the calvaria of the skull. Namely, we have the frontal bone, this is the frontal bone, parietal bones, parietal bones, occipital bone, occipital bone, and on the lateral side, we have the temporal bone. This is the part of the temporal bone. So these coincide in their names with the names of the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes of the brain. The frontal bone, although it's a single bone in the adult, but the frontal bone becomes ossified from two ossification centers. So this is a, a infant skull, and you can see here that we have two frontal bones, and in between them there is a suture that extends to the root of the nose. This suture is called the metopic suture. This suture usually ossifies and disappears by the seventh or eighth year of age and the frontal bone becomes a single bone. Sometimes the metopic suture persists in adult life and might be missed as a fracture. Now posterior to the frontal bone are the parietal bones. And these parietal bones, they meet in the midline at an interparietal suture, which is better known as the sagittal suture hence the sagittal plane of the body. So this is the sagittal suture between the two parietal bones. The junction between the frontal and the two parietal bones is the coronal suture, and the coronal suture marks the coronal plane of the body. Coronal relating to a crown which fits over the coronal suture. The intersection of the coronal and sagittal suture, this point here, is called the bregma. So this is again, this is the coronal suture and sagittal suture, and the intersection between them is called the bregma. The bregma is the site of the anterior fontanelle in the infant skull. This is the infant skull. And you can see here at the junction of the coronal and sagittal suture is the site of the bregma. It contains soft tissue and the bone has not yet been ossified. The shape of the anterior fontanelle generally it is diamond in shape and usually it becomes ossified by the second year of age. An emissary foramen, which is called the parietal foramen, pierces the parietal bone near the sagittal suture. This foramen is evident here in this skull. This is the site of the parietal emissary foramen for an emissary vein that communicates between the vein of the scalp and the superior sagittal sinus, dural venous sinus, inside the skull. The vertex and it is located near the center of the sagittal suture. This is the site of the vertex is the most superior part of the skull, located behind the bregma. The bregma is the intersection of the coronal and sagittal suture. The bregma is the site of the anterior fontanelle. Now, the two parietal bones, they articulate with the occipital bone at an inverted Y-shaped suture, which looks like the letter lambda here. The arrangement looks like the letter lambda, and that's why this suture between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone is called the lambdoid suture. From the superior aspect of the skull, the parietal and frontal 
eminences. These are the frontal eminences here, and these are the parietal eminences are seen as bulges on each side of the bones.